Hey, what's up guys? All right, here is my water changing system. You like? All right, slight update on it. Right here, basically I had an area where I could just pull off water, or water from my uh, ATO, and I would just take it from here, drain it right in the little container, and uh, lug it over to my tank, dump it in my ATO, spill it all over, and uh, yeah. So what I did, I bought 50 foot of tubing on eBay. I think it was like 15 bucks, maybe 20 at the most, but bought a nipple and uh, another ball valve. And I can walk this right on over to my, uh, right over to my reservoir and just fill it from there. You know, of course the, it's going 50 feet and the pressure is a little bit less um, and it takes a while, but I don't have to mess with those stupid little containers anymore. So what I'm gonna talk about here is, um, last week I did a video on why my corals won't grow. And uh, something I, I really didn't think about, and I feel kind of like an idiot because I've been doing something wrong for a long time. And uh, maybe you're doing the, the same thing, but if you can learn something, great. So basically I run a low nutrient system. Uh, I run bio pellets, my nitrates are low, phosphates, all that kind of stuff. I do like about a 30% water change every 10 days. I'm going to cut that back a little bit, you know, go to maybe like 20% or something or um, just so I'm not, the chance of shocking things are a little bit less because I'm doing a less drastic water change. But I bought a little thermometer here. Actually, I think I had, I just kind of never really used it, but it is summertime. It is Texas. Uh, right now it's 85.8 degrees, which isn't so bad. Um, but you know, obviously I want to match it pretty much close to what I'm, what I have the tank at now. Uh, but you know, yesterday I test and the water wasn't like 92 degrees, you know, we're in my garage and it's pretty hot in here, but in any event, I could technically put ice packs or something in the, uh, in the bucket here and let the temperature somewhat stabilize. But as I was saying, I'm running a low nutrient system and, uh, a lot of the people on the forums and whatnot and groups, you know, really recommend running a lower alkalinity. Before, I think it was at 8.4 or so. People are saying, you know, ah, try to go in the upper sevens and, uh, you know, growth will improve and color and whatnot. And uh, I checked the salt I was using. Coral Pro Salt. I mean, hey, it's for professionals. It's pro grade and boom you see that the alkalinity is 12.2 and i don't know how i never noticed that before for some reason i always thought it was maybe in the eights or so and uh and it just blew my mind so i tested the alkalinity of the water and i had done a water change in the remnants the alkalinity was like 12. so putting 30 percent of alkalinity of 12 to to my tank as it is, you know, my tank was running at about eight. Not good. So no wonder, I'm probably shocking my corals. They don't like alkalinity swings from a lot of people. You know, I've heard people say, hey, your nitrates and phosphates can kind of be out of whack, but it's alkalinity that can really affect it. Well, I mean, phosphates, high phosphates will impede growth and colors and whatnot, but, but, so I moved on to this, just regular red sea salt. And on here it even says it's for low nutrient systems. And the alkalinity on this uh, is not roughly 7.7 .7 to about eight. So this is gonna be a little bit closer to what my tank is now. So there'll be less of a shock. And uh, yeah. So you might wanna check that your temperature and uh, especially your alkalinity of the water that you're mixing. And um, that is it for now if you have any comments or likes or whatnot leave them and uh thanks for watching